This monster behind me is the TOG, or to be more accurate, the TOG 2. And once again, Wargaming is at the world-famous Tank Museum in Bovington, England, with another unique insight into the world of tanks. Let me try and position this beast for you. The clue is in the name, TOG, which was actually a nickname that stood for the Old Gang. This Old Gang included some of the first tank pioneers, Stern, Triton, Ricardo, Wilson, Swinton and Earncourt, who in Britain in 1939 had been organised into something called the Special Vehicle Development Committee. Their fear was that the coming war would be fought just as the previous one had been, with lines of strong defences that were enormously difficult to penetrate. So they approached the British Army with a proposal for a new super heavy tank, which could cross broken ground and trenches in support of attacking infantry. A monster landship that would cut a sway through enemy defences. And it was a monster. The first prototype rolled out in 1940 and weighed in at 81 tonnes. That's 25 tonnes more than the Tiger I and even 11 tonnes more than Tiger II. As originally conceived, it had a 75mm howitzer in the hull, like the Shah B and the first Churchill, with a tiny two-pounder in a small turret taken from the Matilda II. Two more two-pounders in sponsors at the side and no fewer than four machine guns to provide all-round fire. Its armour, close to 75mm in thickness, could stand up to hits from 47mm anti-tank guns at 100 metres, and also against 105mm shell fire. The tracks, just like early World War I designs, ran around the entire hull, and there was no suspension for wheels at all. The whole lot was driven by a petrol-electric arrangement, with a 600 horsepower diesel engine driving an electric generator, which in turn powered motors which drove the drive sprockets. The prototype did not impress, since the electric generator overheated and burned out. This was almost exactly the same setup that Ferdinand Porsche would later use to drive his unsuccessful prototype for the Tiger I, which also had a nasty tendency to catch fire. Tank technology and the new style of tank warfare, epitomised by the Blitzkrieg, were already moving on, and the TOG-1 was abandoned in favour of a redesigned TOG-2. And this one here is the only surviving example. It was just as heavy as the first prototype, but incorporated some improvements. The tracks were no longer World War I style, but ran from the front idler through a tunnel to the rear drive sprocket. The sponsons were also gone, and a side door for the six-man crew was installed above the track tunnel. It also now had suspension, as well as two electric generators, which actually seemed to have functioned quite well, although it was still hopelessly underpowered, with a top speed of just under 14 kilometers per hour. On top, the puny two-pounder, ridiculous on a tank of this size, had finally been dropped, and a variety of turrets were tried, culminating in this one, mounting a 17-pounder gun. This had been lifted wholesale from the Challenger, good name, a 17-pounder version of the Cromwell cruiser tank. The hull mounted 75mm howitzer had also gone, replaced by a 7.92mm Beza machine gun. In short, it had begun to look like a World War II tank rather than a World War I throwback. Let's now take a look inside this monster. The first position that's clearly identified in the centre of the vehicle and towards the front is the driver's position. Just to the right of the driver we would have found one of our 7.92mm Beza machine guns and you can see the port there where it would have been mounted. Directly behind that you can see this very large turret basket. Now this would actually have moved obviously in turn with the turret. 
and located up inside the turret we would have found the commander, the gunner and the first of our two loaders. As for the second loader, well nobody's really too sure where his actual position was so we're assuming that he would somewhere be wandering around inside the rest of this vast compartment. Look at the amount of room you've got on the back decks of this vehicle. It's absolutely incredible. I mean, there's enough room to hold a party here. Directly in front of me, we can see we've got this great big 600 horsepower diesel engine. Behind the engine, we had the two generators. And behind those generators, we had two electric motors that drove the rear sprockets. Even had it gone into production, it is very doubtful whether the TOG would have ever had any useful role on the battlefield other than making a nice big target. The problem was that other better tanks had already arrived, which, between them, could match or outperform the TOG in every way. The Churchill for armour protection and the infantry support, the Sherman for speed, manoeuvrability, and eventually, firepower. So the TOG remains an oddity, a tank that looked backwards in warfare that was moving forwards and a warning that the demands of war often require revolution, not just evolution.